What's going on, everybody? Hello? Oh, six seconds. What is happening, everybody? My name is Hyla, and welcome to the Adobe Pillow Talk series. We are live right now at Sundance at the Airbnb house. If, you're, if you happen to be here and you're walking down, up and down Main Street, stop on by 596 Main Street, get a free coffee, come hang out. But the reason we're here is that we're interviewing filmmakers in bed. I was too lazy to get out of bed, so Adobe has accommodated me, and we can do everything right here. I'm super pumped to join our next to join with our next guest here. We have Mickey Keating and, of course, Valerie Crawl Pfeiffer. Did I get it right? She's the editor of the film, and then we have the director of Carnage Park. Jump into bed with me, guys. Get in here. Get cozy, Hi. man. That's Hi. Fun, dude. Hi, all right, let's uh, let's get the mic. You guys are gonna have to share this mic. Cool. So as they were talking, just kind of put it right there in front of you. Sure. Now, uh, first of all, welcome to Sundance. Thanks for having us. Welcome to my bed. Very excited to be here. Is Very it comfortable? comfortable? Yeah. You we're, like it? We're pretty having a good time here, man, I you, think. Um, first of all, let's just, let's give everybody a little idea of what we're working here with. Carnage Park. That uh, that's the poster. That's the whole movie right there. Yeah. I mean, we only got one frame. You don't even need a trailer. It's just like a crazy lady with a gun and like skull and bones all over her. You like this is all right. Let's start from the beginning. Horror is kind of your thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You how does one get into that? You know, uh, you just kind of at an early age realize I think that it's like way more fun to watch Michael Myers chase people around than it is to. You know, uh, skateboard or play sports or anything like that. So that's kind of where I jumped into it. <laughs> and now you and I have something in common. We are both from the great city of Orlando, Florida. Florida. You're an Orlando, Florida guy too. <laughs> I oh guess. man! <laughs> and and I know that Halloween Horror Nights. Oh yeah. Was a big thing for you, dude. I love Halloween Horror Nights more than anything. My goal, in fact, is to like make a movie that one day turns into a Halloween Horror Nights haunted house. Explain to everybody what Halloween Horror Nights is, so in case they haven't been. Halloween Horror Nights is the greatest Halloween event in the entire world, put on by Universal Studios. Basically, when I was growing up there, they had like all these original, insane kind of haunted houses with original storylines. And basically, they close down the park, and at night, you walk in and you're terrorized until you leave. You go through different scare zones, different haunted houses. It's a great time all around. Absolutely. It's, right. Imagine going to Disneyland, except Mickey's like a zombie chasing you around. Right. With a chainsaw. And, you <laughs> right. know, and I, I'm relentless. It's, it's a bummer, though, because I left Florida before I could actually, like, what, before I was actually of age to become a scare guy. Sure. All I want to do is chase people around with a chainsaw, but an, <laughs> the dream is, continues one day. All right. So how when, when you first get into horror, right? and you're sitting down and maybe some of your earlier work you're showing to your parents. Right. How do you be like, hey mom and dad, I promise you I'm a normal, I'm fine, I'm just like really into this stuff, it's cool, don't worry about it. I, well, I think it's funny because I always know whether my movies are like doing something if my mom gets furious. <laughs> so, like, like when my mom's like, oh yeah, that's a pretty good one, then I know that I've done something wrong and it's, uh, you know, I, but I think at this point they've gotten used to it because I just ruined their house growing up with fake blood and everything. So they've kind of just been like, well, he turned out all right now, I guess. He's uh, laying in a bed at Sundance. So yeah, so yeah, that's our boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Valerie, yeah. um, how did you guys, uh, you know, hook up? Where, where did the relationship start between the two of you guys and working I mean, together well, on films? Quite literally. I mean, you know what? I'm just going to go like this. I think, yeah. I think I'm going to turn it around. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So, Side talk. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Mickey and I met in college at Boston University okay. and started collaborating pretty much immediately. And we've actually been dating ever since. Oh, you guys are actually in a relationship. We are. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh. I thought you were just collaborators in, in film, but also, but in, also life. in life. In yeah. life. In life and love. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's an experience, man. Yeah. Oh, this is sweet. So, you ha kind of had the same like love for horror? You know what? I mean, it grew because of this guy. Right. Um, I saw The Ring when I was like 12 and couldn't sleep for months. Okay. So I kind of stayed away from it. And then when I met him, he introduced me to just crazy horror movies. And again, like, how do you, 
Okay, is this guy crazy? Should I be dating him? Or there this were is a couple rep. of thoughts, but I, I enjoyed it. She lies. She's the, she's the depraved one. Every time in the edit, she's like, "We got to make that more hard." You know, we got to make that crazier. So she's always the one who like. She's got the dark side. Okay, let's talk about the film a little bit. Kind of give everybody a little synopsis of what Car Carnage Park is all about. So Carnage Park, set in the 1970s, is about a couple of crooks who uh, botch a bank robbery and they flee into the desert to escape, and they end up way in a place way worse than jail. So you know, it's definitely like it's got crime, it's got laughs, and it's got some terror. So we're pretty excited for it. So you, you got everything there. Now, when you're working with someone that you're dating with. That's a very fascinating um, formula. Obviously, it's successful for you guys, but I would imagine before you get to the final print of the film, there's some interesting fights and arguments and you know tug of war that goes down, right? You want to take this one? <laughs> yes, that, that, that you normally wouldn't have with just like a, a editor or director for hire. Sure, but um, I think the passionate arguments that we have wind up um, helping the film because um, if one of us feels very strongly about a certain thing and then the other one has a really strong opposing argument yeah. I think we work through it in a more intellectual personal way totally. and so you can do it in a way where the other one's gonna say no that's stupid and I think like with anyone else if like if they're like that's terrible you shouldn't do that there'd be like this weird kind of like well, that guy, you know, I don't like what that guy said. But because it's me and Val, we kind of just, it's, it's very easy and comfortable. And, you know, with the beautiful Adobe products, it's very conducive to creativity. Ding, ding, ding. That was not paid, by the way. <laughs> that was just all just al natural. Just, I'm just an enthusiast <laughs> for uh, Adobe. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay, so um, low budget, right? You don't have a ton of cash. This isn't a huge, you know blockbuster film by any stretch of the imagination it really comes down to storytelling that's something that we've been talking about with all the filmmakers like you can have every fancy piece of equipment you can have every fancy piece of editing software it really doesn't matter unless you have a story totally and the thing with the horror is that because you're already dealing with a subject matter that's crazy and ridiculous and over the top how do you do it in such a way that you don't go too far with it. You know, how, how do you draw those lines? How do you figure that out? Well, I think it's all about, you know, uh, finding that kind of balance. And, you know, like anything, uh, <laughs> there's always the opportunity to start off really shocking and then work your way down. And I think, you know, in general, if you're trying to make a horror movie for an audience, you definitely feel it in the room when you start showing people, like, and just when things don't click and you, uh, you just keep working until they finally find a way to resonate with most people and if you send it out beforehand then uh, you know that's kind of your problem yeah. so I think you know in a way it's been very uh, the ability to work really kind of quickly and flu you know have this kind of liquid uh, workflow makes it really easy to just find your footing even like far along down the line because we usually take it's it's really interesting because the way technology is going you know you can cut something the same day you shoot it in a way right. but like we usually take our time and really let it breathe and let the process figure itself out before we uh, bring it out into the world so from conception to final print how long did it take you to make this guy well we so I wanted to shoot this movie uh, as my second film uh, back in 2012 but for whatever reason we just couldn't get it going and so uh, it's been about two years in the making now but we started shooting in May and we locked our cut and on our mix like three weeks ago. So, oh, wow. So yeah. it's super fresh. Super fresh. Okay. Uh, we're also taking questions. We 100% want to hear from you. Any questions that you may have, get into the comment section. Uh, type them in there real quick. We want to get them in on this interview. Also, if you're here at Sundance, uh, 596 Main Street. Uh, we're broadcasting right outside this window. There's people. Hello. Hi, guys. How's it going? Come on in. We have free coffee. We have free interviews and free questions. All right, do we have a question already? Producer Karen is coming around the corner, and this will be her voice. All right. From the Wolfman, what is the most valuable resource in Catan? <laughs> oh, God. What? I can take this one. <laughs> um, well, I'd have to say or because... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's valuable towards the end of the game, and it's good to barter with. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, Wolfman. We love you. Wolfman, that was fantastic. Also has a special thanks in the movie, so, you know, he, he should be feeding more questions to us. Wolfman, <laughs> step it up, man. Wolfman, please. Are you even a man, Wolfman? What's your real name? He doesn't have one. The manliest man. The manliest man. The first time we ever met him, he's like, I'm Wolfman. Honestly, I got an email <laughs> from, from a guy named Patrick. Had no idea it was him until, like, weeks later. There you go. Well, thank you, Wolfman. Uh... What Sundance is this for you? You've been here before. First time. This is your first Very one. First, yeah. Wow, what is that like? Is it, so the first, okay, take me back to the moment you got word that your movie got into Sundance. That's crazy. So we're, uh, I was walking down the street, and we're, I was going to the grocery store, uh, very annoyed about something totally not related to Carnage Park at all, and I see a random number call me, and I was like, at this point, I was like, all right. We haven't heard no yet, but we're far enough along that somebody could give me a ring and say, you know, man, loved your movie, but here's why it doesn't fit our criteria. So I got this phone, phone call, about to step into Ralph's, which is the big grocery store out in L.A. Yeah. Great selection. Why? <laughs> they're, also, Again, they're also not paid. That's me. not a paid endorsement. Just a big Ralph's enthusiast. And uh, <laughs> so I got a phone call. It was Charlie Ref, And he's like, hey, man, you know, I'm, I'm Charlie Ref from Sundance. Just want to let you know we saw your movie. And at that point, like, my stomach had dropped, and I was, like, standing in the middle of the street, and he's like, yeah, and I just want to let you know that you're in. And he's like, we got Rob Zombie, we got Kevin Smith's new movie, and literally the entire time I'm just like, don't say anything dumb, don't say anything <laughs> dumb, don't say anything dumb. And, uh, and from that moment on, we've just, I still kind of can't believe that I'm here right now in this bed. Uh, yeah, that's a whole separate conversation, of totally. course. But, uh, so how many films have you done? So this is our fourth feature uh, to, you know, as like an official feature. We made one right. Uh, right out of college that we shot on weekends for zero dollars that that somehow strangely got picked up and put out into the world. So since then, we've just been riding on that. I mean, so what advice do you give to somebody, a young filmmaker, they're trying to figure it out. They don't have a lot of cash. They want to hang out with Rob, Rob Zombie, too. You know, what, what do you, when you look back at the journey, do you see kind of the steps that you take was it like just kind of coincidence and timing or something a little bit more calculated well i think it just comes down to like knowing the kind of movie that you want to make before you start making it because i feel like especially when there's very little time very little money there's a lot of opportunity to second guess yourself and if you know like all right these types of movies inspire me and i saw it work in this this and this film then it makes this terrible crunch when something inevitably goes wrong right a lot easier to fix and be fluid with and i think you know part of it is of course timing and its perseverance and it's putting up with a lot of i mean we've edited our last four movies on a no three movies on a fold out chair so my my back is still not the same so uh <laughs> it, it, it's a lot of like trudging uphill beforehand okay so now i have five questions here i want you guys both to answer this okay. five questions i'm asking every single filmmaker and just first thing that pops in your head there's no wrong no wrong or right answers there's just answers where do you go when you need uninterrupted creative space what do you do or where do you go to find that uninterrupted kind of creative headspace adobe.com oh, <laughs> No, uh, you want to answer this first? Uh, well, I was just going to say our living room couch. That couch is magical. I mean, that's where all our ideas usually start, and then Mickey pops up from it and then starts pacing and explaining his entire idea front to back. And I'm like, you just thought about this in its entirety in 15 minutes? Like, that's, that's, that's our spot. Yeah, the living room couch is uh, both a, a haven and a place where you silently panic <laughs> un until the world passes over that problem. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, do you find you're more creative when you're staying up late or if you're getting up early? Staying up late. Yeah. For sure. Well, I mean, in the horror genre. Dude, I mean, we, we, push, we push some 4 a.m. nights, yeah. you know, working on this one, so. For sure. Um, what's a creative killer to stay away from? You go first. So yeah, just make sure that when you talk, these are like directional mics. Sure. You gotta, but I don't know if you've ever like worked with microphones the first before. Time no, the first just time. Just so you know. Yeah. Uh, cell phones. Cell phones and emails. Getting emails from people. That that will kill kill creativity. So you just stay off. I try. Email. Real hard. I yeah. try. And what about you? Is yeah. there anything that gets in your head that you like 
No, I need to stay I away mean, from it. I that, mean, that's it. It's just m your mind wandering. Distractions. It's just when you start worrying about all your anxieties and then you start regretting things. Just don't do that. Just stay in the moment. What's your biggest fear when making a film? That people are going to say mean things on the internet. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> hmm, I don't know. Mine, mine is that somehow, some way, the film will get destroyed or burn and or disappear right before we're about to show it. That's that's the just, big fear. Just, there's a meltdown. All your hard right. drives just melt just down. Just last. Or it's like someone kicks my door in and specifically goes to the drive that we hoped we were going to send out today. Yeah. That sounds like your next horror film. Someone <laughs> trying to steal your hard drive. Well, yeah, because I would probably just go Michael Douglas and falling down if that were to happen. <laughs> and finally, what are some, what, what's like a topic that people will be or should be talking about or making films about this year? I think just more women. More women in film, strong female characters and just badass ladies. Badass ladies. Badass. That and Star Wars. Yes. Speaking of badass ladies, yes. Yeah, sure. That totally. would that would include well, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you in. so much for having us. When will world. we be able to see your film? Carnage Park premieres. You're not here at Sunday. Oh, um, hopefully at a theater near you very soon. Oh, Karen, tell me we have a question. Oh, we gotta oh. squeeze this in. All right, here we go. The Wolfman knows you guys. Who's taking care of your cat while you're at Park City? Uh, we have a wonderful pet sitter named Cassie. What's the cat's name? Thurston. Thurston, of course. Yeah. What kind of cat Shout is Thurston? Out to Thurston. <laughs> Thurston. This what one's they, for you, buddy. <laughs> what do they do at award? Go to bed, Thurston, if you're watching this. Um, thank you, Wolfman, and Thurston. Thanks, buddy. And uh, thank you to you guys. Congratulations. Thank you so much for Carnage having us. Park. All cool. Right. Cool. Sweet. Yeah.